I have tried to educate. If I have not succeeded altogether, I have certainly educated myself about these questions and also about these wonderful human beings that are American. Just remember who you are. You are Americans. Your forebears found a wilderness and they began to convert it into a fair land with only three weapons, with the Bible, the ax, and the plow. Nothing stayed them, neither the perils of death, nor wounds, nor savage mountains, nor wide rivers, nor the unknown into which they plunged. They were of every racial stock and every religious faith, and each brought something of the old country to the new country. And different though they were, they became one. This is our heritage, and this is our true glory. We are a people, I tell you, that is just beginning its high adventure on this continent. It is an adventure in which, young though we are, we have done this. Our people have had more happiness and prosperity over a wider area for a longer time than men have ever had since they began to live in ordered societies 4,000 years ago. Since we have come so far, who shall be rash enough to set limits on our future progress? Who shall say that since we have gone so far, we can go no farther? Who shall say that the American dream is ended? For myself, I believe that all we have done upon this continent is but a prelude to a future in which we shall become not only a bigger people, but also a wiser people, a better people, an even greater people. I believe that we shall achieve not only a higher standard of living, but also a higher standard of life. Never forget this. There is little we Americans cannot do if only we can imagine ourselves wanting to do it. Power alone is not enough, nor is faith alone equal to the task. The future is to those who take it. We shall strike off the shackles that still bind the United States. It is the duty of leaders to lead, of the creative to create, of the daring to do. The free world expects leadership of us. Its fate and our fate depends upon our leadership. The life or death issue of war or peace hangs upon it. We are 155 million strong. We are industrious, inventive, restless, with the fires that burn within us. We are free striding people with a confident, free swinging stride that marks the American everywhere he goes upon this earth. We are conquerors of time and of distance. We have explored the awful jungles of matter and emerged with the powers of the exploding sun. Our cause is just, our heart is high. And let us then, I say, press forward toward the new world that we can create in the name of America and of suffering humanity still in chains. Now you say words, beautiful words. But how, how do we do all of this with a staggering budget of heavy, heavy taxes surrounded by the communist menace and enfeebled Europe, Asia in ferment, our boys in war, training for war? Well, I say that nothing is easy and the best things are the hardest. But consider what it was done at, at Valley Forge, what was done in the dark days of dissension and disaster in the Civil War, in the two world wars when the very survival of Western civilization trembled, and in the Depression, there is nothing new, only different. And all our troubles, all our immense difficulties, now and in the future, can I say, be solved if we have the will, the courage, the boldness to face them, face them square. To use Seneca's phrase, man is more than a rational animal. And invoking the guidance of providence, rational men, animated by the destiny of greatness, can think and can act and can do greatly. Thank you.